Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about polymorphism and virtual member functions in C++. So the big concept here is that polymorphism allows an object reference variable or an object pointer to reference objects of different types and to call the correct member functions depending upon the type of object that's being referenced. So in this way, we can assign different types of objects to the same pointer or to the same reference type. So let's go ahead and see an example. So we'll go ahead and create a class that we'll call square and square is going to have as part of its private stuff, a integer variable. And as part of its public interface, we'll give it a constructor and that constructor will accept a single argument. And that argument is going to be assigned to the private variable. Then we'll add an accessor and a mutator. So we'll have void set X, which will assign its argument to the variable X. And then we'll have an accessor, which is gonna return the contents of X. And then we will have a function that will just print the name of the shape uh, square. And so we'll do that. And then we'll have a derived class that's gonna be our base class. And so then we'll have a derived class, which we will call a rectangle. And this derived class is just gonna add another dimension mentioned and so we'll have private int y and then we'll need as part of our public interface a constructor and that constructor is going to accept two arguments one's going to be for the x and the other is going to be for the y and we'll pass the x argument up to the square constructor and then we'll assign the y argument to our private y variable and let us specify that this is in fact a square so we use public class access specifier and it is a derived class of class square all right so we're going to add that and then we'll add mutator and accessor so void set y so int underscore y and we'll just say y equals underscore y and then our accessor here and get y and that's going to return y and then we'll have a function print okay so this is a redefined version of function print that we inherited from our base class so we'll say a rectangle. So now here's where the polymorphism is going to come in. We'll create a standalone function that um, simply we'll call foo, and it'll have a constant square reference parameter. And we'll have it call the get x function. We'll say something like s c out s dot get x. And then let's go into our main and we'll create a square, which we will initialize with eight. And then we'll create a rectangle, which we'll initialize with two and three. So we'll call this function foo and we'll pass it the square. And when we do that, you're going to see the eight, right? Because we're going to invoke the get x and that was what was assigned to s. Now, because of polymorphism, we can pass the r as well, permitted because of poly morphism. So why is this possible? Because a rectangle is a square. So you've got the ability to pass a square, obviously, because a square is a square. This is a square reference, but a rectangle is also a square because it is derived from class square. Rectangle is a square. So we're able to do this. And when we do, we're going to see that we get two, right? Because the X that we assigned was the X as part of the rectangle object. We pass the rectangle object, its address to the function. And so because of polymorphism, the compiler was able to determine which get X function it should call. So in this case, it called the rectangles get X function because we passed a rectangle object as our argument to the foo function. When we did the S, we were passing a square object as an argument to the foo function. And so then the compiler was able to call the get X for a square. Now that's all well and good, but let's see what happens when we call the print function. So we'll do S dot print and we'll pass first the square. So if we pass the square, pilot, run it, you're going to see that it says square as you would expect, right? But now when we pass the rectangle object, let's see what happens. It still says square. What? You know, why is it still say square? It clearly says in the print function in class rectangle, it says rectangle. Why? Why did this happen? Well, the reason that this happened is because we have a redefined function in 
class rectangle and redefined functions are bound at compile time. That is to say that at compile time, the version of the print function is set in stone. And since this is a square reference, then it's going to choose to use the squares print function at compile time. So we need to be able to fix this. And the way that we're going to be able to fix this is by introducing this idea of virtual functions. So if we go in and we add this virtual keyword to our function definitions. So if we do that, then the type of binding changes from static to dynamic. And so what that means is, is that the decision as to which print function to use is made at runtime based off of the object that is assigned to the parameter. So now that I made this virtual, when we pass it R, the decision is going to be made when it runs. Okay, so now you can see that the correct print function was called. Now you might notice that I didn't put that virtual keyword in front of rectangles redefined function. You only have to do it in the base class. Now, if I expected that class rectangle would have a derived class based on it, then I would go ahead and put that virtual keyword in there as well. Now, when we use the virtual keyword and we add another function, how we refer to that changes. You know, if they're not virtual functions, then this is an example where where we redefined, all right? So we redefined the print function that was inherited from the parent function. But if we use the virtual keyword, then this term changes. It's no longer referred to as redefining the function. It's referred to as overriding the function. So when you use dynamic binding, you override. When you use static binding, you redefine. Another thing to keep in mind here is that polymorphism requires references or pointers. So for our foo function, we used a reference, but if we didn't, if we didn't pass by reference, then we're going to go back to using static binding, even though this is virtual up here. So when I pass R, you're going to see that we end up saying that this is a square again. So you have to use references or pointers to utilize polymorphism, to utilize the dynamic binding. Not only can we do this with references, but we can also do this with pointers. So let's do something like this. Let's create a square pointer and that pointer we'll call S pointer. And then we'll assign to it the memory address of our rectangle. And now when I call S pointer, when I dereference it and I invoke the print function, we're going to see what? We're going to see, you know, this is a rectangle because the dynamic binding is in place and we're going to invoke overridden version based off of the type of memory address that is assigned to the pointer. So the type of memory address that was assigned to our square pointer here was a rectangle memory address because we got its memory address. So we have a limitation we have to talk about. When you use a base class pointer like this, you can only invoke functions that the base pointer knows about. And so it's going to know about functions that are defined in the base class and any of the redefined functions in the derived classes. So for example, you know, we did this statement right here as pointer and we called uh, function print, but the base class doesn't have a get y function. So if we were to try to invoke the get y function, so we'll do something like this, uh, s pointer, uh, get y. Okay. It's not going to compile. It's not going to work because, you know, the pointers will only work with base class functions and derived functions that have been overridden. So one more limitation we have to talk about is that is a relationship will not work in reverse. So let us say that I created a rectangle pointer instead, and I decided I wanted to try to assign the memory address of a square. Okay. To that pointer, it's not going to work. And the reason for that is that a rectangle is a square, but a square isn't a rectangle. So the rectangle is the derived class. The square is the base class. So you can't do this in reverse. So I want to show you one more thing here, an example of something cool you can do. So we'll make a class named foo and class foo is going to be a square. So it is going to be a square. It is a square and we're going to give it just a couple of public things. We're going to give it a function print. We're going to give it its over own overridden function and it's going to simply print out, you know, foo like the other guys do and we'll inherit the constructor from class square. And then back in main, what we'll do is we'll create an array of square pointers. 
So it's not an array of squares, right? An array of squares would just be something like this. We're not doing that. We're gonna create an array of square pointers. So let's put that asterisk there. And then we'll use an initialization list to assign three memory addresses to this array. So the first memory address is gonna be the memory address for a square. So we're gonna use dynamic memory allocation. New is gonna get us that memory address. And it's gonna be a memory address of what? A square. Square is gonna expect us to pass it an integer to its constructor. So we'll do that. That will be assigned to the first element of the squares array. Now we're going to do a rectangle, same kind of deal, and we'll pass to it you know, one and two to its constructor. And then the last one will be a foo. So we'll have a new foo and we're going to have to pass to its constructor a value and then we are done. So that's creating three objects and we can store their memory addresses in our array of square pointers because a square is a square, a rectangle is a square, and a foo is a square because of that inheritance relationship and because of polymorphism just like we showed right so then what we'll do is we will step through the array so i'll create a little for loop here and we'll invoke the print function on each of those individual square objects on the square square on the rectangle square and on the foo square and we'll do that just by simply doing this okay now since we did do dynamic memory allocation here or we're gonna have to have delete execute three times because new executed three times and we'll just do another for loop and we will do delete s okay so we'll clean up our memory we'll dynamically allocate some square objects. We'll assign their memory addresses all to the same array. We'll step through the array invoking the print function for each of those square objects because we have polymorphism. We can do that. And then at the end, we will step through the array deleting each object one at a time. And before we run that, let's go back up here and actually provide a definition for our virtual destructors. Otherwise we'll get an error. So there we go. There we go. And we'll add one here for foo as well. So virtual destructor foo. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it, compile it, run it, test it. And so now you can see the results of the print square rectangle foo. So we were able to invoke the print function of three different objects because of polymorphism, because of the fact that a square is a square, a rectangle is a square, and a foo is a square. So now you know the basics of polymorphism and virtual functions in C++, as well as static binding and dynamic binding. Thanks for watching.